Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to the fourth and final installment of our GUTV Bracketology series for 2019. My name is Jacob Dizon. Over the past few weeks, my classmates and I have worked hard to provide you with insight into all things college basketball. And with our Bracketology series for this season coming to a close, I'd like to recognize them for their stellar work. In today's final show, we will be taking a look at our GU TV Senior and Alum of the Week, as well as highlighting the ways in which GU basketball impacts the community. So without further ado, James, let's take it away. Thanks, Jacob. Take it. Good morning and welcome to GUTV Bracketology. My name is Adrian Anderson. And I'm Ian Portman. On today's show, we will introduce GUTV Senior of the Week, Franny Boyle, highlight the career of GUTV alum Colin McQuilkin, sit down with former GU basketball player Matt Santangelo, and much more. First, we would like to congratulate our Zags on another outstanding season. The men's team finished with an overall record of 33-4, capped off by another deep run in the NCAA tournament. And even though our Zags fell short of their second trip to the Final Four, we are still proud of them for yet another magnificent season. That's exactly right, Ian. Over the years, Gonzaga's athletic program has proven to be a top competitor in the world of college sports. GUTV senior Francis Minigan had a chance to highlight the new Volkal Center Hall of Honors, a new building on campus that showcases Gonzaga's many athletic achievements. Behind me is the new Volkar Center for Athletic Achievement, a roughly 51,000 square foot facility that opened just this last spring. Located directly behind the Martin Center, the Volkar Center aims to help student athletes succeed in competition, the classroom, and the community. It houses training facilities, a practice court, a nutritional center, support services, and study spaces. Now all of that is just for our fellow student athletes, but for the rest of us regular folk, there is one part that we get to enjoy. Aside from the awesome sandbox in the front, that is. Follow me into the Hall of Honors. Now I'll admit, I tried to get us in to see the athlete facilities, but it didn't work out. <laughs> it's a practice facility. <laughs> the hall is decorated with banners and mementos that all the public is welcome to come in and enjoy. There's this awesome big screen right when you walk in, constantly playing highlight reels. Oh. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> We got this sick timeline that shows the history of all of Gonzaga's athletics with this thing. And who knew that the Bulldog wasn't even our official mascot until 1921? <laughs> How tall am I? I'm wearing heels. Okay, so I tried out the photo booth game face thing on the wall. <laughs> oh, that's a terrible photo. <laughs> but I don't think I quite did it right. That's supposed to be my face. <laughs> and here in the center, there's a hall of fame with all the notable players over the years. Fun fact, this is my great, great grandpappy, Billy Mulligan, Minigan Mulligan, you know. <laughs> there's even a nice bronze statue of NBA hall of famer and former Ask Professor Dan Show guest, John Stockton. This lovely plaque commemorates the historic 2016-2017 Final Four season. We were close this year, boys, but it's tough when you got to play against Texas Tech and refs. Finally, we wandered into this hidden little spot in the back that held some cool trophies, only to find evidence of one of the most important parts of Gonzaga history. Oh, -ho! Gonzaga football undefeated since 1941. The Hall of Honors beautifully commemorates the outstanding athletic achievement Gonzaga has seen over the years. Whether you're hitting the gym, just taking a stroll down memory lane, or you just wanted to sit down and relax by the fire, the Hall of Honor is where it's at. 
Francis Minigan, GUTV. <laughs> Thanks to Francis for that humorous inside look at the Hall of Honors. Following a tough loss for the Zags last weekend, our GUTV bracket competition is sure to have undergone some changes in the rankings. With an update on the standings, we have Nash Thompson standing by in Opila. Nash? Thanks, Adrian. Well, we didn't have a ton of movement, but a little bit nonetheless. But before we get into who the winners are and losers, let's talk about the divisions, just to remind everyone what we're working with. So our current divisions are current students, family and friends, which includes faculty and staff, and alumni. So let's hop into the first one. In current students, we have in third place our buzzer beater panelist host, Arden Cravalo. Second place is Wealthy Vu. And in first is our own Chrissy Lubke. We found this awesome picture of Chrissy sitting next to Bill Walton looking a little short. Chrissy, keep eating those greens, and I'm sure you'll grow up to be big and strong just like Bill one day. In our next division, we have family and friends, with at third place being John Billings, second place, Brittany Mikes, and in first, the better of the Carr brothers, Austin Carr. Well, Austin's been in first this almost entire time for family and friends, and I'm thinking he's probably going to stay there. For our third division, we have alumni. In third, we have Robert Perry. Second, we have Veronica Murray. And in first, we have Katie Carl. Thank you to everyone who participated in the bracket challenge. I don't think there's going to be much more movement since almost everybody had the Zags winning, but with the final championship game being on Monday, there still could be a little bit of movement. So stay on the lookout for the final winners on our social media. Now, our Trevor, our Trevor Bond got to sit down with the Alumni of the Week, Colin McQuilkin, and see what Colin's been up to since his time at GU. If you see a production truck with a large SWX logo on the side of it at your favorite sporting event in the greater eastern Washington area, odds are GUTV alumnus Colin McQuilkin is involved. Since graduating in 2012, Colin has worked at KHQ here in Spokane as a director and producer of news and sports for SWX, developing a career doing something that he found a passion for at GUTV. I did a lot of directing while I was at GUTV. From the very first time I directed in that beginner's class in 203, I sat at this desk. Uh, the equipment was a lot different, but I kind of fell in love with that part. In his last year at GUTV, Colin combined his passion for making TV with his lifelong love of sports and produced Gonzaga's first all sports show. As a kind of a senior project, I started what we called the Doghouse. It was a half hour all sports show. And we got interviews with folks like Kelly Graves, who was the coach of the women's team at the time. We brought in baseball players and talked to them. And we kind of tried to highlight some of the athletic programs that maybe don't get the national spotlight the same way the men's team does. Throughout Colin's time at GUTV, former director of broadcast studies Dan Garrity and former broadcast engineer Phil Taylor left lasting impressions on Colin that still guide him today. Dan was there to put a boot in my rear end every time I needed it. I probably still have the scars to show it, but he drove me to be better every day and Phil as well was another father figure and mentor to me. I learned so much from Phil, especially that every problem has a solution. As long as you just keep break it down piece by piece, you will find that. And that has helped me in the professional world so much. Colin is still very connected to GUTV, as he often looks for current students to help crew his SWX broadcast. I like bringing those GU students in because I can share what I have learned since GUTV with them. And I hope a lot of them catch the bug for what I love to do because it is a lot of fun and as far as GUTV students go, for the most part I found they're hardworking, they're knowledgeable, and they're willing to do just about anything they have to to get the job done. Now a well-experienced director and producer for SWX, Colin looks back on GUTV as a place that helped develop him a passion and gave him important tools to succeed in the professional world. GUTV took me in, gave me something I was totally passionate about, and taught me hard work and perseverance. And that's the biggest thing I have to say that GUTV has done is it teaches you the value of hard work, which will get you further than just about anything, especially in this business, but pretty much in all of life itself. Hard work continues to drive Colin as he continues working in a field that he loves. For GUTV, Dean Saranac. That was a great piece by Trevor Bond getting to sit down with Colin and thank you again to Colin for being able to sit down with us and spend some time out of his busy schedule with us here at GU at TV. Well, coming up from the break or after the break, we will be talking about some great social media pictures that we got from our Zags run and we'll be taking a look at the Senior of the Week. For GU TV, I'm Nash Thompson.
Welcome back to GUTV Bracketology. Our current EP and our social media coordinator of the year, Jacob Dizon, sent out a challenge to all of our current Zags and alum asking for their best pictures from the Zag season. So we have a few and we're going to go through them. Our first one we have is Ethan McReynolds, 82. Looks like Ethan's standing out there with his boys in front of CM wearing that, rock, or that throwback Sabonis jersey number 11. Looks like he had a great time. The next one we have is at Isabella MH. She said, throwback to waiting in line for Zag games, missing these good times. She looks like she's cuddled up there with all of her pals and it looks like it's cozy warm in those blankets. And the final one, we have the GUTV legend Barkalo and some professor named Dan Garrity, who said, at GUTV Zags asked us to post our favorite pick from this season. The irony is that Barkalo can't be in the same room with me when I watch Zags basketball. One of us gets too worked up. Well, we all know how Barklow feels after having a couple classes with Dan. Anyways, back to you boys at the desk. Thanks, Nash. It's always nice to see how the extended GUTV community showcased their love for the Zags. One GUTV senior who does just that is Franny Boyle. As a double major in broadcast studies and public relations, Franny has surely made her mark on the Gonzaga community, making her our GUTV Senior of the Week. My name is Franny Boyle and I'm a senior broadcasting and public relations double major and I'm minoring in English writing. As a kid, I had a lot of different aspirations. There were so many different paths I thought I might go down. I, broadcasting was never something on my list. Uh, it wasn't until I got to college that I was introduced to journalism, which eventually led to the broadcasting program. And what really drew me to it was the storytelling aspect. My friends will always say I tell these pointless stories, like I'll go on rants. I just love telling them different things about my day, like something will happen during the day and I'll be like, oh, I can't wait to make this into a story. As storytellers and as broadcasters, we have to be a voice for the voiceless. So I think that I really like the aspect of being able to give that voice to people who can't necessarily tell their story or show their side of something. Franny's experiences within the broadcasting program have been nothing short of amazing, even when she's conquering her biggest fear in the production control room, the switcher console. Having even made her toughest experiences fun, it's safe to say Franny has some wonderful memories worth sharing. I think my favorite memory is probably just being in Advanced 469 altogether. We all got to do every position in the studio and just experiencing each position, like everything after advance, like after every show, after every package I produced, the feeling of accomplishment was the most rewarding feeling. Having this community in the broadcasting program has been like defining of my college experience. I have told my roommates, like I feel so comfortable in this building. I think one of the biggest things I've learned to do in this program is working with a team. So like when we would do shows in Advance 469, I mean that is completely a team effort. In five years, I hope to be able to use both my majors, public relations and broadcasting. I hope that I'm, I hope that I'm still working with a team. I hope that I can use the skills that I've learned in broadcasting and PR such as like writing, but also being able to produce visually and storytell. After college, I'm really excited to be a part of the GUTV alumni. Um, they've all been super helpful to us. I love how they're, they always come back and visit, or they'll reach out to students with like career opportunities. I hope that I can come back and help GUTV students and give back to the community that has given so much to me. I'd like to thank Franny for sharing her GUTV broadcasting story with us. I'd also like to thank her for letting us see just how special our program is to her, but more importantly, for showing us how important she is to our program. For GUTV, I'm Femio Palace. We would like to wish Franny the best of luck as she continues her life as a soon-to-be alum of GUTV. On that note, with this being our last Bracketology show of the series, we'd like to feature another notable alum, only this GU grad never sat behind the anchor desk. Former basketball standout Matt Santangelo is a Gonzaga graduate who has made his mark on the Spokane community. From his days as a playmaker on the court to his life now as the director of Spokane Hoop Fest, Matt's legacy in the area is sure to be remembered. With more on the profile of this Gonzaga legend, here's GUTV sophomore Chrissy Lubke. 
If you look behind me now, you will see a bustling Spokane street. But come the last weekend in June, this street and this area will be filled with basketball courts and bustling in a different way. What I'm talking about is the largest three-on-three -three tournament in the world, Spokane Hoop Fest. I had the opportunity to sit down with Spokane Hoop Fest director, Matt Santangelo, and learn how he has become the face of Spokane basketball. Before taking over Hoop Fest, Matt came to Spokane to play basketball for Gonzaga. My final five schools coming out of high school were Stanford, Oregon, Rice and Houston, Northwestern and Chicago and Gonzaga. At that time, I thought um, I was going to have the greatest chance to really make an impact at Gonzaga and I was coming to play basketball. To make an impact and play basketball is exactly what he did. Matt was a crucial member of the 1999 Elite Eight team that has helped propel Gonzaga basketball to where they are now. We were so naive, like we didn't know we weren't supposed to win games and we didn't know we weren't supposed to be and we were the Cinderella team and really kind of threw Gonzaga into the national consciousness. Um, and we were just kind of along for the ride. Like, see, we didn't really set out to do that, but the byproduct is we got to be the start of something that's really been quite, quite extraordinary. The next season, Gonzaga reached the Sweet 16 with their all-time assist leader, Santangelo. After holding that title for 19 years, GU senior Josh Perkins broke that this year. Yeah, I just tried to take it as more of a celebration, a celebration of his career, a celebration of Gonzaga basketball and where it is today versus where... I found it, you know, 20 plus years ago. And it was also gratifying knowing that the program and the team has had so much success. And to have my name be a part of that history, I think is, is pretty cool. After a brief stint of playing basketball overseas, Santangelo found himself once again in the Spokane basketball limelight, this time as the radio broadcaster for GU men's basketball. He was able to cover Gonzaga's run to the final four in 2017. It was this really wild, euphoric, emotional ride. And I remember when, when Gonzaga beat Xavier to go to the Final Four, like I remember the last minute of the radio broadcast, I was in tears, like I couldn't talk. After GU's national championship run, Matt stepped away from broadcasting to focus his attention on the largest three-on-three -three tournament in the world, Spokane Hoop Fest. I'm the executive director of, of Spokane Hoop Fest Association, a local 501c3 nonprofit. Spokane Hoop Fest is about much more than just one week weekend in June. They have different developmental programs such as AAU and Ignite Basketball that help youth get engaged in the game. You know because I think there's a ton of lessons to be learned and very little, little of them have to do with the game of basketball. It's, it's more the lessons you can learn in the game that you can apply to all other facets of your life. Matt Santangelo has been able to represent Spokane basketball on some of the largest stages and he continues to help the upbringing of Spokane basketball every single day. Chrissy Lubke, GUTV. We would like to express our appreciation to Matt for taking some time to chat with us about his glory days on the hardwood to his life now as an active member of the Spokane community. Don't go anywhere because after the break we'll be taking a look at the Final Four NCAA Tournament as GUTV senior Arden Cavallo leads the conversation with our final buzzer beetle panel of uh, discussion for 2019. I'm Adrian Anderson and you're watching GUTV. So as a college student, I can't really have a pet of my own, but I want to do something to help out these, you know, really neglected animals. I mean, we can't help all of these animals, but every little effort goes a long way. Because uh, quite honestly, every animal deserves at least one happy day. Chances are you've walked right on past it, but the Next Gen Tech Bar is the new spot for your tech needs. Their new support center is by students for students. Don't be intimidated by their white lab coats because they are more than happy to help. Whether you need a password reset, software update, or a new Ethernet cable for your computer, the NGTB staff has got you covered. So come on by and get the help you need today.
Welcome back to GUTV Bracketology. My name is Arden Carvalho. For our final buzzer beater panel of the series, we are joined by Gonzaga professor John Collette, GUTV senior Andrew Lee Penwell, and of course recent GUTV grad and current sports writer Stephen Carr, who is probably back on the show because he moved up a couple of spots from last place in the rankings of our bracket challenge. Ooh, that was a rough season. Sorry about that. Let you have it here. That's, that's all right. But I, I will give you this. I will give you this. You were the only one that got one Final Four, four yeah. team right in Virginia. So congratulations on that. Thank you. It's better than nothing. It's better than yeah. nothing. For Andrew sure. Lee and I have nothing in our Final Four because we have the same Final Four. Hey, yeah. same with me, so it's yeah. okay. We're all good in that boat. <laughs> um, speaking of Final Four, let's take a look at our uh, Final Four bracket, the remaining teams. We got Michigan State taking on Texas Tech on one side, and then on the other side, the only remaining number one seed, as I mentioned, number one, Virginia, taking on Auburn. So, Andrew Lee, let's start with you and get some predictions on these games. Who do you have winning that game, and then who do you have winning the national championship? I picked Michigan State for all of this. Don't pick against Tom Izzo. I tell myself that every single year, and then I go and pick against them. <laughs> I've yet to learn from that. He's an incredible coach. This is his like eighth Final Four. Yes. He's won a national championship before. And he always has such great teams. He's just so emotional. They're really great defensively and they're so tough. So I think they're going to take the whole thing. However, Vegas odds do pick Virginia, mm -hmm. like three to two or something like that when I checked yesterday. But my money is on Coach Izzo. I would agree with you completely. I got Michigan State winning it. It's hard to go against Tom Izzo and Cassius Winston in that one. Mm -hmm. So I got them playing against Virginia, but the Spartans probably beating them by eight or so. What do you think, Steve? Wow, eight. That's pretty yeah, awesome. yeah, I'm gonna, wow. It's been a weird year. <laughs> it it has been, been a very, very, very weird year. <laughs> um, I don't know why anybody's asking my for, for my prediction after my bracket. Do the opposite of what Steven said. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, but I have Virginia beating Texas Tech at okay. the National mm -hmm. Championship. I like that. Yeah. What about you, John? Uh, I have Virginia beating Michigan State uh, in the championship. I really, and I might be just a sucker for a great storyline here. Mm -hmm. I like Virginia being the first one to lose to a 16, then this redeemed team comes through uh, and gets it done for Tony Bennett. It would be really awesome. And then Michigan State's had Virginia's number losing in 14 and 15 in the NCAA tournament. So uh, the way that they pulled out that Purdue game, which was crazy, was it just so felt like, okay, yeah. they can do this, they can do anything. So we'll see. That would be quite the turnaround from losing in the first round yeah. as a one seed, mm -hmm. then winning the national championship. That would be a huge storyline mm -hmm. right there. Um, Steven, let's move over to the Gonzaga game uh, not too long ago against uh, te Texas Tech. They lost 75 to 69. They were held to 42% shooting, and they were uh, held under 70 points only the fourth time this season. What do you think went wrong for the Gonzaga Bulldogs besides the fact that Texas Tech's defense was at playing at an all-time high level? It is playing at an all-time high level, and their offense is a lot better than people yes. give them credit for as well. Um, Gonzaga had opportunities in both halves um, to kind of make the big shot, and they just couldn't. Um, I, Corey Kispert had a, a wide-open three in the first mm -hmm. half. Zach Norvell had a wide-open three in the first half. Both of them rimmed out. Um, they were up four with like 15 minutes to go in the game. Um, and Brandon Clark had a huge block, and Ruri came back down the other way and would have had a layup that would have put him up six, which would have been the largest lead of the game. And he kind of got stripped on the way up. Texas Tech came back, drained a three, and it was mm -hmm. a one-point game. So it was those kind of opportunities. And then later on, with like five minutes left, Jeremy Jones had a wide-open three, which he's hit all season long, and he couldn't hit either. So they had these opportunities, which they've hit all season, and for one game, they, they couldn't. And that's the nature of the tournament sometimes. I'm surprised you didn't uh, mention the Josh Perkins technical foul. I feel like it's a little touchy subject, I know, but bit. it is kind of a big moment of the game. It is a big moment of the game. They didn't lose it because of that. Um, the fact that they were even in the game at that point was because of Josh Perkins' that heroics true, yes. in the final two minutes. Um, but they had plenty of opportunities before that to, to kind of get themselves back in it and take the lead. But it just sucks that Josh Perkins' career yeah. is kind of yeah. be defined oh by the, yes. that final play it is. Um, because he had a, a pretty spectacular career here. Well, we wish him best of luck in that three-point contest he's playing in Minneapolis mm -hmm. with all the college seniors, so yep. good luck with that for him. Annie, um, this season, regardless of that Elite Eight loss, mm -hmm. it's still a special one. They got the win over Duke, uh, number one Duke, a 33-4 and record, a regular season WCC championship. 
Where does this Gonzaga season rank in program's history in your mind? I think this is probably one of the better teams of all time. I think that national championship run that we had two years ago is probably the best team ever. But I would put this at like number two, just all the talent that they had. And they didn't just beat people. They completely blew very good teams, in some cases, out of the water and just rolled through conference until we got to Vegas um, and played so well in the first couple games of the tournament that I think that they just are so talented. They just came up a little bit short. I would agree with you. It had to be number two. Mm -hmm. You would have to compare it to, I guess, the other Elite Eight teams mm -hmm. that they that have gotten that far. Mm -hmm. So I would say they're number two right behind the national championship team. Uh, John, what are your predictions for next year's team? Because some people, they have to make some big decisions. Yeah, I, mean, I think the question is just who's who's coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what seniors are, are leading, and, and notably, so Jeremy Jones, uh, Perkins, and uh, Crandall. So mm -hmm. those three gone. And just and, Jack, and Jack Beach. Jack Beach, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, my, my mistake. My mistake. That's it's all good. Right. Sorry, Jack. Uh, so really the question is Rui and Clark. Do they go to the NBA? And uh, I would have to think they do. I don't have any inside information. Just this was kind of brought to my attention a while ago. But Gonzaga grad, if they make $100,000 a year, it takes 30 years to make $3 million. If they are first-round pick, they make that in two years. It's kind of hard yeah. to say no to that. I'm all for four years of education, but these guys have an incredible opportunity. And there's still there's still two other people that need, need to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Norvell is still thinking about it. Tilly's still thinking about it. So there's some well, there's a lot of thought process. Right, and what's there. nice now with the way that the NBA is set up is they can go to the combine. They yes. can kind of see mm -hmm. where yes. they might stack up rather than having to declare right now, sign an agent. So I think those guys still go through the process to probably go and hopefully the Norvell and Tilly come back. Yeah, I think Rui and Clark are kind of gone at mm -hmm. this point, but what do you think about Tilly and Norvell? What are, what are they thinking right now? Uh, I don't think Tilly comes back. Okay. Um, I know a lot of people think he's kind of 50-50. I, I think it's more of like a 25-75 thing. Oh, wow. Um, I think Zach Norvell comes back, though. I know he said something about him mulling his future or whatever in the postgame, and a lot of people kind of freaked out over it, but... It wouldn't shock me if he put his name into the NBA draft process, kind of got some, some mm -hmm. input like Jonathan Williams did after yeah, his junior yeah. year. Um, but he should come back. He's got a lot of stuff that he can still work on. and It's kind of going to be his team next season, mm -hmm. so he can kind of yeah. catapult himself into better draft position. And same with Norvell, because we could use some guard help, that's for sure, and for next sure. year. And there's a risk factor, I think, for these guys. If you're not a first rounder, you don't have guaranteed money, guaranteed mm -hmm. contract. Mm -hmm. uh, if Tilly comes back, I, and it obviously would be best case scenario for Zach fans, has an amazing next year. I mean, he might be a lottery guy, could be a first rounder. So uh, you have a platform here at GU to really be on that national stage and boost your draft stock if that's what you want to do long term. I would agree with you completely. Yeah. Unfortunately, guys, that's all the time we have. I, we could talk sports forever. That's over here. The basketball. <laughs> I know, I know. It's a lot of fun talking with you guys. I appreciate all the uh, work you guys put in for us uh, and all this course. talking. So thank you guys again. Thank you. Thanks again to our wonderful panel for taking time out of their day to reminisce yet another great season from the Zags. With that, we'll throw it back to Adrian and Ian at the Anchor Desk to close us out one final time. Before we'd go, we'd also like to extend our gratitude to the donors who have contributed to our program as our shows would not be possible without your support. If you feel compelled to make further contributions to our program, please visit the link on the screen to benefit our program in any way possible. Thanks again to tuning in to GUTV Bracketology. I'm Adrian Anderson. And I'm Ian Portman. And we'll see you next time on GUTV.